Hey everyone, I'm Jenny with the Go Box and Van Gogh Artist Bar, streaming to you from overcast and cloudy Sherwood, Oregon on Thursday afternoon, and I'm uh, creating a date night painting for you guys. So let's have a look at what we're doing. Let me make sure I line it up properly. I think this one goes on this side. Is that right? Yes. Nope, that's wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to do it on camera, seeing myself in reverse. So there we go. You can uh, choose who gets to paint tent and who gets to paint campfire. <laughs> so pick out who gets to do what and situate yourselves accordingly and let's get going. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on our project real quick. There it is in all its glory. <laughs> so funny story on this one. Um, I designed this a year ago and it got taught in our studio maybe twice. And then when I went to, to film it today, I could only find half. I could only find this half and this half was a wall. So I actually had to repaint this side. So you can see uh, what it will look like painting with a partner. I mean, painting a year later, matching the colors and everything, even though I take photos of the process, it still was like, oh wow, this is different. So yes, your paintings, your sides will end up slightly different from each other. And I've seen some in the studio with date night that are very, very different and they still look super cool. So you know, you get to bring your own personality to each half of your painting. And when you hang it up on the wall, which hopefully you'll do at least for a little while, um, you'll get to see your two personalities there. So yeah, this painting is designed for uh, two spouses, two partners, a grandparent, grandchild, friend and roommate, whoever you trust to go Bob Ross with you, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to actually push these aside. I will reference them as we go throughout because I am very visual and I like to show pictures and, and show what we're doing. So what you'll want to do, well, first you each want to have a uh, paper towel or, or some kind of old paint rag and then brushes. I use our set of three, oops, I'm already marking the canvas, uh, which has a large, medium and small brush. Um, some of you have a different set. We, we have several sets and they all will do the same thing. So whatever set you've got, that's what you'll want to use. You just want to make sure you have a large flat brush and then a couple uh, smaller ones, so medium and small, but that's what I like. Colors, and this one has kind of a larger palette than we usually use. I don't know what happened with the blue there. I, I put it on there and it really spread out. I think that the bottle looks like it needed to be shaken up a bit. I can see it's got a little gel. I might actually give myself a fresh bit of blue because that one, there's a, a substance at the top of the acrylic paint bottle, and this is when they come in the half gallons, and if you don't shake it really well, the, it floats to the top, and it, it's just, it's not gonna hurt the painting at all, it's just thinner, I can tell already, it's got a lot more liquid to it. So this one's a lot more heavy bodied. We're gonna go with that. So cross out that. <laughs> and then we've got black and white. So this is black, white, phthalo blue. This is a color called phthalo red, which is just basically like a, a raspberry pink. Um, these two, these three colors I love because they're super opaque and they're they're kind of thin, but like this one I can paint over solid black and it shows up great. These three are, are hard to mix on your own. Obviously yellow you can mix pretty good, but these two especially are kind of hard to mix. So I actually like these ones straight out of the bottle, which is, is uh, I guess that's not what I was taught in college. They are, our instructor loved us to, our professor loved us to mix color and I think it's a really good thing to learn. Okay, that being said, you'll wanna have a cup of water to wash your brushes with and hopefully uh, you guys are, are ready to, to start this and have some kind of beverage or something to uh, give yourself some liquid courage. But let's go ahead and take our biggest brush to start. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it in the water cup and kind of lightly brush it across the bottom of the cup just to wake up the bristles. Dry it off really good on each side. I try to get the metal ferrule dry too because you'll sometimes have a little rogue drop of water that will surprise you by plopping down on your painting. So this one, I wanna keep these pretty lined up at least to start. And we're going to start by painting in the sunset going up into the dark sky. 
So color-wise, let's mix um, phthalo red and orange. And let's add a little yellow in there too. Tequila sunrise, that's what I'll call that color. Tequila sunrise, there we go. All right, we're gonna mark off our horizon line. Now this one is, is pretty close to right in the middle. So what I'm gonna have us do is draw this line across. And we're gonna go all the way across and meet in the middle. So I will use the skinny edge of my brush to draw. Look at my hands are already getting blue on them. And I'll just go straight-ish across. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because much of this gets covered up. And it doesn't have to be exactly half. Mine ended up being pretty close to half, surprisingly, because I'm sitting down and these are flat on the desk, obviously not on an easel. So seeing what I'm doing is a little harder, especially because I'm not super tall. Okay, so if you're on the left side, we're just gonna start brushing. Oh, there's a really loud truck outside or something. So we're just gonna start brushing at an angle, same over here. So, oh, there's my palette. Same thing over here. And I can see where I'm getting, I'm getting streaks of that phthalo red, that kind of pinkish color. I love that. I think that's great. I try to, I try not to over mix my paint so that I end up with these nice streaks of color. And you can even do that. Like I could put some orange in there or even yellow just to, it's like you're mixing it right on the canvas. And you can see I'm sort of brushing at an angle. It works really well for this particular type of skyline. Those of you on the right side, you're my tent people. I like to bring this the sky up just a little higher on this side. You can see I'm occasionally just grabbing yellow or just orange. It's all gonna mix together nicely on here. So it's up to you and your partner if you guys want more of a pink toned sky or if you want more of an orange or yellow tone or just a little bit of all three. So one thing I wanna show you, you can see these little stop and start marks. That's just from me doing this with the brush. See what that does. I tend to like to smooth those out with this particular type of sky. So I'm just gonna, once I get the paint on there, I just do long end to end brush strokes. So you can see the difference. Look at that compared to that. I have actually, Never taught this painting. I designed it, but I I gave it to my instructor to teach at the studio, Annalise. So you guys get to be my, my student guinea pigs. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right, and keep in mind, you can pause the video anytime if it ever feels like I'm going too fast and you're having a hard time catching up. Please just pause the video. And you can always go back and add more to the sky and develop it further. Along here, we're gonna have a mountain range. So some of this stuff down in here that's not super developed, I'm not even gonna worry about it because it's gonna be covered up. And now we get to switch from this color to a turquoise color, which tends to, this is orange based, or it's got a lot of orange in it. Orange and this light turquoise color, which is called Bahama Blue. Those two mixing together, they do tend to make kind of a muddy color. So we're gonna go about it carefully. Wash your brush really good. And dry it on the towel. Make sure to get that metal ferrule dried off as well. Okay, so yes, I don't wanna go straight to this color. I'm actually going to mix pink, or the, the phthalo red, I'll just probably refer to it as pink a lot, with this. So it's gonna make kind of a pinkish lavender. And I'll just start right along here. Not a lot of paint, just a little. So we're gonna do that, both of you. So each side, and you'll see right away where the two colors meet. It doesn't make the prettiest color, but it's just a transition.
One thing I like to do, obviously I'm using very little paint because the more you use, the more it's going to mix with this orange color, orangey color. <laughs> and uh, so I, I like to just put a little bit at a time because then I can control how much gets mixed in. And one thing I like to do, I like to brush down. So I'll brush it on the canvas and then I brush down into that first color we put on there and that will sort of force blend the two a bit. And you can bring it down into that sunset color, that's the, or the tequila sunrise color I called it. Look at that, as I'm sort of brushing it down, that blend is looking really nice. This one needs a little more work. And just make sure you're somewhat aligned <laughs> with each other for the sky. There. So as I was saying, it doesn't make the prettiest color. It's kind of brownish, but it's going to be a nice transition to where we can actually use this color. So let's wash our brush and dry it off. And I like to work pretty quick when I'm doing the sky like this, where it's real blended, because I want the paint wet. So it will blend together better. So let's pick up just a little bit of this, each of you, just a little bit of this turquoise. And now we're gonna brush along the top edge of this funny color we just put on here. Very little paint. And do the same thing, you brush it across and then start brushing it down. Let your brush just naturally run out of paint. There, that's, that's actually looking pretty nice now. So we had a pretty smooth transition from the orange based color into this turquoise, which can be scary. I've had it. I did. I remember I did a lavender field painting, I think the first year in business. We've been in business almost 10 years now, and I've learned a lot along the way about how to word things, what to teach, what not to do, that kind of thing. But yeah, everybody's canvas turned brown because I had orange and turquoise in the sky. And I went around and I personally fixed a lot of them. <laughs> Sometimes I just learn that way. So we're going to transition pretty quickly into really deep dark. Now this dark you can actually end up bringing down further closer to your uh, sunset because really this isn't supposed to be a daytime painting. It's late at night. We're just seeing the last little remnants of the sunset before it's completely inky black dark. So let's take, you don't need to wash your brush, dip it in this blue, the dark blue, and let's, let's grab a little turquoise and mix the two together. I just sort of, see how I'm dabbing my brush and poking it through the color? I like to have kind of a marbled mix so that when I paint it on here, it's pretty streaky. Although it's actually not, it's actually not very streaky. So I didn't, I probably over mixed it a bit. That's okay though. Let's do this on both sides. Same thing we've been doing. So you're gonna brush it on and brush it down into your turquoise. Now your turquoise color, which is so pretty, it might end up being eliminated, but we'll bring it back. I always like to come back and, and bring a little turquoise back in there because it is such a pretty color. And I think this is the only, well, other than the water, this is the only place we use it. Okay, I'm going to go and dip the brush without washing it, dip it right in the solid blue, the dark blue. No, no uh, turquoise mixed in there now, it's just solid. Oops, I got a little fleck on the canvas. That will get covered up by the mountain. So this is the hazard with painting flat. My, I'm always bringing paint over the top of the canvas. I've had to fix a lot of weird little marks or turn them into birds. Sometimes that's, that's the easiest fix. I see little flecks here and there. We could have a whole flock of birds on here, depending on how much paint I end up getting on here. So we are going to add black up in here. But for now, just the dark blue. Just make sure you line up. So this here, where the two canvases meet, obviously I'm doing both, so 
going over both. I end up with a funky little spot here where my canvas just sort of sinks between the two canvases. I mean, my brush sinks between the two canvases and then pops right back on. So sometimes it, it reacts really funny. Yeah, I definitely want to put more turquoise on there in a bit. And I want to get the black up here. Let's have a look at that original again for reference. So see, we're going to add quite a bit more dark on there. And then, yeah, I'll get some of this pretty turquoise going on here. But for now, it's a little bit too wet to add anything else. So we're going to work on another part of the canvas while that dries. Let's wash our brush. And as crazy as it sounds, we're actually going to paint this lower half just solid black. And we form our river and little uh, island peninsula thing there from this dark black. So let's go ahead and dip the brush right in the black, nice and generous. Your brush strokes here can go any which way, but I'll, I'll do, I will start right at the top because I want this to dry fastest up here because we're going to have a mountain range that we'll paint in. And it is nice to have that black up here dry so that we aren't dragging too much black into our purple mountain majesties <laughs> we're gonna paint on there. So I am uh, born and raised in uh, Oregon. I was born in Portland and raised out in the south of Portland and kind of kind of in the country and have been obviously surrounded by the Cascade Mountains my entire life. So when I do a painting with the mountains on it, it is 99.9% .9 of the time Cascade Mountain Range or, you know, looks like the way the mountains are formed out here. I know a lot of you who are doing this painting are from Oregon because we've uh, we've had our studio here for in Portland for 10 years. So we have a, a nice big fan base in Portland and some people have moved away. I have a, a fan who actually moved to France who follows us and then uh, some subscribers to our subscription box who live in Wyoming. They came from Portland. It's pretty fun. Paul and I were just talking about uh, doing a national park theme landscape series, which we had started a while back and then it just kind of got thrown by the wayside as the studio got busy and all of that. But because we have a really large fan base now, thanks to YouTube, we do like to throw in some national parks from different places. He and I have done some road trips with our kids and that's been really cool. I think our the best place we went to was Yosemite National Park, gorgeous there. But we hit, on that particular road trip, we hit three national parks. So we went to Lassen and Crater Lake and Yosemite all in one trip and that was really cool and you know we waited till our kids were were like teenagers well our daughter was let's see she's, she must have been about 11 old enough to behave her son was a teenager so that that trip was really nice but the scenery was so amazing Yosemite is just you can imagine it I imagined it like crazy because I had wanted to go there for so long. And when I finally got there, it's just like nothing you can imagine. So if you can ever go there, I highly recommend it. Just check the weather because we went in the end of June and we had to wait. We were a little afraid that we weren't going to be able to get in. The, the pass was closed because of snowpack late june too we could have gone it there was another pass we could have taken but it would have been like a 16 hour drive and nobody was up for that <laughs> and so yeah check the check the weather for sure if you're gonna go go in august <laughs> when everybody else goes okay there that actually is really cool together um the the 
silhouette of this dark against this bright sky. This could become anything. I could put some like cactus along here and this could become like a desert scene. Some tumbleweeds. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I love this part of a painting where you look at it and you're like, this could really become anything. But it's going to become our little tent scene with the bonfire and the tent and the fun mountains. So let's wash our brush. Like you can see, I am washing mine repeatedly here. I <laughs> like to get it nice and clean, although we are going to be using black here, so I really didn't have to wash it so well. All right, back up to the sky. Now keep in mind, as you are painting, one thing I like to recommend to people is obviously hit your pause button when needed, but also it's kind of nice to have a hairdryer plugged in nearby because you can turbo dry your canvas. If you're having trouble and you're like, God, I wish this one part would just dry, your hairdryer will take care of that in like 30 seconds. So I recommend having one nearby that you can bring your canvas over to and zip the hairdryer over it. All right, let's add some dark up in here. So I'm not gonna use pure black. I'm actually going to use mostly black, but I'm gonna mix a little blue and black together. More black than blue. You want it really dark. And I'm gonna start way up in the upper corner for, for those on the bonfire side and the lake side. And then I'll get over to you guys on the other side here in a minute. So I'm starting way up in the corner, brushing down. Not a lot of paint on the brush, just like before. We don't want, the more paint we have on the brush and the more we put on the canvas, the more we have to figure out where it's gonna go. So I do like to use just a little. Now those of you on this side, we have less space to put black on, but I do want you to, to do that. Just what, what you'll probably do right here, and I had this issue when I painted the second side today before this video. I wanna make sure that, see how dark this is, but it doesn't right match with this right here. So you may end up with permission painting over or having your partner paint over on yours so they can blend together. But yeah, we want we want dark, the darky, darky, the dark blacky blue together on each canvas. And it might be something that you end up brushing down quite a bit and have a, a lot darker sky than mine. I'm going to do baby steps, baby steps to dark. And I will add more turquoise like I keep saying. And I could even add some more dark blue, but let's just, we'll just go a little bit at a time. I can tell already that my sky on this one is quite a bit more light and vibrant than this one. See that a little difference there. And this original one, I know what happened because I had to do it on that second half. This ended up with some of the dark blue mixed into it, which gave it almost kind of a, uh, it's kind of a dirty color. <laughs> like it's it's not a, a pure color like what I've got on the canvas right now. It, it's a little more toned down, muted. Maybe muted is the right word. I hate to use the word dirty. It's not a dirty color because it's a pretty color. Let's wash the brush and dry it off really good. This is where globs of water dripping off the metal ferrule can cause all kinds of problems with your canvas. I had that happen and I ended up with some white spots in the sky that were too big and weird looking to become stars. So I had to touch them up. Okay, little bit of paint here, pick up a little turquoise. So when I, when I say pick up a little bit of paint, sometimes when you brush your brush through it, you end up with a lot. So I'll just brush it off on the palette around it. I brushed almost too much off. Let's go ahead and add some of this overlapping that wet paint we just put on here. Oh yeah, I like that. And you could even, like I'm turning my brush and using the vertical side. I could even just make some more horizontal type brush strokes, less up at an angle down in here, because it can look like a cloud base in theory. <laughs> Clouds sit kind of flat on the bottom. So see that? If I step back from my canvas, 
like up close, it's like, what have I done? But if I step back, it really can look like a nice cloud base. Every time you add paint now, from this point on, I want you to use just a little bit. Very little, look at my brush, very little paint. And if you want to add more dark blue, this is kind of cool because it looks like, um, like there are some clouds going on there. Uh, back to my train of thought here, a little ADD moment there. Let's add some more dark blue if you like. So you don't even have to wash your brush, pick up a very little dark blue and brush it in there. I'm not pressing very hard, just a real light whisper thin, whisper light pressure. And this is something you can keep, you can develop and develop and develop it until your eyes are crossing. As long as you have permission from your painting partner to keep working on it, just Key factor, very little paint. Now this is where you could look at this and decide, is this too orange? Do I want it more pink? Because you can totally change it right now. I happen to really like what's happening on this one. It was kind of a surprise thing the, the, when I started painting those horizontal brush strokes and ended up with a little bit of darker color down here. And I said, oh, it's a cloud base. That was a nice, happy little accident, as Bob Ross would say. I don't really have that so much in this one. I guess there's a little bit of like, you can see the turquoise through there just a bit, but I, I really like that, how it ended up looking like thin clouds. We obviously want them to be thin because there's going to be stars in this painting and we don't do stars on top of clouds generally. Thin clouds though, you can see stars through them. So technically, technically we're safe. Okay, washing the brush. Let's see, what are we gonna do next? I think we'll do the mountain range next. Let's see here, let's mix the color with our biggest brush. And then we're going to draw the shape of the mountains on with our medium brush and fill them in most likely with this big one. Let's have a look at the original. Okay, so they are deep purple, grape soda color. And I've got a nice mountain here. This looks just like, almost like Mount Hood. Although this little extra bump here is with Mount Hood is closer to the top. And then it sort of dips down and climbs back up for another Mount Hood. <laughs> Cascade Mountain Range right here. Okay, let's mix our color. Just dark blue and your phthalo red. That makes such a great purple. And you don't need a 10. I'm gonna run out of palette space here. Um, if you don't have a paper plate to use as a palette, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going with about equal parts, equal parts, um, pink to blue. Um, if you don't have a paper plate, one of the things I've seen people do is cover a ceramic plate with tin foil or use a piece of wax paper. These palette Pads are really cool. They're, I think we sell them for $6, six or $7 on our uh, gobox.com. It's 50 sheets and they're like a wax paper. So the paint doesn't like seep through or anything. It works really great. Okay, so I've got my grape soda color. You can see it there. Nice color, I like that. I don't wanna wash this brush. I wanna keep this paint on here. So I'm just gonna set it aside Try not to drag like your sleeves through it or anything. Did that the other night, that was fun. Medium brush. You might have a flat brush. A flat brush works totally fine here. I have a round one. I'm gonna dip that in here. Uh, you can get your brush wet first if you want, like dip it in the water, kind of brush it around on the bottom of the cup and then dry it off. Mine was already slightly damp because like I said, I used it right before this video to paint that other half. Okay, so for those of us on the bonfire side, let's make a marker point. So let's come up about half an inch or so from the, the bottom, I mean, from the horizon line. 
Now mountains, before I go crazy here, I'll show you what I show students in class. So the very first time I taught a class and that had a mountain in it, I said, okay, we're gonna paint Mount Hood here. And I turned around, I painted my mountain, and when I turned back around, a lot of the students had this sort of thing going on. Because you think, oh yeah, mountains are triangular. Well, yes, they are. But so are the Egyptian pyramids. <laughs> and the two don't really look alike. So the height on this is okay. What you want though is the gradual build and a little lumpiness. So let's see there, see the difference? Look at that, like I said, height was okay. It's just the gradual build with the bumpiness. And then when you fill it all in, you've got a pretty nice mountain shape. So just keep that in mind. They're quite a bit wider than they are tall, at least these ones that we're painting. If you're painting like Mount Fuji or something like that, which would be super cool, um, it's definitely more pyramid shaped. Even though I'm sure it's a volcano as well. Okay, so let, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to Wikipedia that, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. Paul, maybe you know, Fuji's a volcano, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But yeah, it's a lot more triangular than our cascades. Okay, so let's go ahead and come up. I just kind of wobble my brush a little here and there. I'm coming up into the blue, at least on mine. Maybe on yours, you're still in the, the orangey shade. It doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna come back down and then, oh, I've got a perfect little spot here to go up, add another, and then just sort of work my way down to where I'm maybe about a quarter to a half inch above the horizon right here. You guys on the tent side, I'll, I'll guide you through too. But the important thing is you wanna match this up. That's a pretty decent mountain shape. It'll do. Uh, those of us on tent side, let's have a look. So we're gonna come up from here, climb up for a little peak and then all the way up this is really close to, well, it's not quite halfway between the horizon and here, but it could be. You can have it go up and be dramatic. All right, so let's go, let's wobble along here and then pick up for a little, little slope here. No Egyptian pyramid, just a little slope. And now I'm going to do that big climb. Have a look at your sky. How much of it do you want to cover? That's what you want to look at. Do you have an ugly part right here you want to cover? Well, then make your mountain really tall. Mine, I, I think right about here is perfect. All right, now you can wash this brush off and we'll all use that big brush, which I had you set aside. And we're gonna paint this purple in to fill the mountains in all the way down to your horizon line. I've got this little tiny gap of orange there. And I'm going to actually cover that because if it was bigger, I think it would be fine. But because it's not, and it just looks like I forgot to paint part of this, I'm just gonna cover it carefully. Okay. Don't worry about this area where the black and the purple meet because it gets touched up a few times, especially on this side. and keep a little bit of this purple color. We may end up having to touch up the mountains after we paint the stars on, depending on how you, the method you use for painting stars. I'll show you a couple different. One's kind of messy, but it looks really cool. But it's one where we, we sort of flick the little white dots everywhere. So they end up getting over the mountains and we don't want that. We don't want fallen stars on our mountains. <laughs> that might be kind of ominous. So yeah, we'll, we'll plan on touching that up with some of this purple. If it dries or you run out, it's real easy. You saw it, it's just two colors. You can make it again. Really liking this. 
Purple and orange are opposite on the color wheel. They don't mix well together, <laughs> like wet paint with wet paint, but they look really good with like what we're doing right now. And if your sunset color ended up being more pink, it's gonna look really good too. Pretty much any of those three colors we mix together. It's purple and yellow look good together. I had purple, this color purple hair for a while. So I've experimented with a few fun shades just cause you know, as a, as an artist owning my own show, I can, I can do that. When I worked for other people before I couldn't, but yeah, when going back to that, I, I was always looking for yellow clothes, like yellow cardigans because <laughs> purple with yellow looks really good. Okay, I love how you can see, occasionally you get where you see the background color behind poking through, and to me it just looks like natural highlights that we didn't even try to do, they just were there. <laughs> Fun. Okay, washing the brush, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get some stars on here. All right, dry this off. So this technique that we're doing, I remember doing something similar in maybe kindergarten or first grade with a toothbrush and watercolor paint. So we're gonna travel back to elementary school. Let's use our medium brush, dip it in the water, and let's put a little dot of water somewhere in a clear space on your palette. Obviously it's kind of dark blue, bluey gray, doesn't matter. Let's stir a little white in there. So we have a nice watered down ends up being very ice pale blue, but when you put it on your canvas, it's gonna look white. And this is the technique. It's really involved. <laughs> now you're gonna get your hands a little messy, but this paint will wash right off your hands. So I hold the, I hold the brush maybe a half an inch to an inch, probably an inch away from the canvas. And I'm literally just flicking it like this. If you have an old toothbrush, I use that. It works really good. Um, for it, whatever surface you're painting on, for those of you who ordered the kit, the recyclable paper that we pack the box with, that works so good to put under here. I probably should have said that in the beginning of the video. Put under your canvas. Uh, actually, one of my regular subscribers gave me that tip. I was like, dang, that's smart. So that's one way to do stars. The other way, if you don't want to do this and you're like, nope, game over, I'm not, I'm not going to get messy at all. You can uh, use the handle of your brush. Those of us who did the flicking, we're going to do this anyways. And you can dot little white stars everywhere. So on the original, I did both. I wanted it to look like there were thousands of stars out in the atmosphere that were tiny. And then we have some larger, more visible stars because if you've ever been out camping in the wilderness, you're away from all the city light pollution and you really see lots and lots of stars. Okay, this is probably about all I'm gonna do. Maybe a little harder to see on the video, but in person, it's really visible. Here, I'll, I'll do my thing I sometimes do where I lift the canvas up, and show you the zoom in, the extra special zoom in. So you can see a few ended up on the mountains, not too many. I don't even know that I would need to touch it up, but because I talked about it, I'll do it. I'll just use my medium brush and I already have some of that purple since we were just using it and just touch up any spots that are really noticeable. Okay, that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna go and do what I said, where we will use the handle of the brush to get my finger. <laughs> yeah, it will wash off. I end up with, gosh, I go into like, everything that I need to get to for the 
our subscription boxes and everything is right here within a half mile, mile radius, which is so convenient. And Starbucks is there too. So I'm always going around and getting there and realizing, oh, my hands are covered with paint. But hopefully people can just be like, oh, she's an artist. Not like, wow, she's dirty. <laughs> okay, so let's take the little brush again, poke it in the white. Now, when you go to put it right on your canvas, that first star you get is gonna be massive. So sometimes what I'll tell people to do is just poke it a few times on your palette and then touch, touch it onto your canvas. And you can kind of experiment with how many times do I need to poke it down on the palette. Oh, and if you went really crazy and you ended up with stars down in here, you'll want to touch those up too with your, just your black. You didn't do it wrong if that happened. It, ha it has happened to me when I've done paintings like this. We have several that have the same exact uh, star design. So I'm doing what I always do. I talk about it in every video. I'm making a pattern. I'll look and be like, oh yeah, they're all half an inch apart. So what I'll do then is I'll kind of cluster some together and then move along to force my brain to stop making patterns. Now those of us on the right side, we do get to do a cool heart constellation. So we'll do that later. And I'll show you all the ins and outs of that. I'm sure if you look up in the sky somewhere, you could find a constellation or find a pattern of stars that would make a heart. Some of those constellations that were discovered blow my mind. It's like, oh, here's a, uh, like the, the Orion constellation. Oh yeah, that's Orion, there's his belt. And when you look at it, like, actually it just makes a couple couple like triangular funny shapes. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So those of us over here, you don't have to do too many stars up in here where, where I'm doing a lot right now because we'll put our constellation there. And you can have one or two that maybe get down close to the orange or pink sunset, even some that might be slightly in it. But not too many. We want the, the stars to primarily be in the darkest parts of the sky. Nice. Moving along here. Okay. The mountains are probably a little too wet to have highlights on them quite yet. So I'm going to uh, let them dry just a bit longer and we'll move along to uh, those of you working on the bonfire, we are going to draw in the river that curves around. Don't be nervous. You can do it. Just trying to figure out. I'm not used to doing two canvases on one of these videos, so my space is weird for me right now. Where do I put this? Okay. So uh, let's take our medium brush for those of you on the bonfire side. Those of you on the tent side, you can just relax and cheer on your bonfire person or heckle them if you're really mean. <laughs> but uh, yeah, or you can work on your stars or touch up anything that needed to be touched up. So those of us over here, let, let's take our medium brush and we're going to mix dark blue and turquoise. Not a lot of turquoise. Just a little, and blot it together like I did earlier. So you have this sort of marbled mix. And we're gonna draw this thing in. So I was looking at this earlier, thinking, how am I gonna teach that? <laughs> Cause it's kind of funny. It's got it like a funny shape. So it looks like a big river that comes around this way. And I thought, okay, so what we can do is we can do this triangle. It's like a pizza. Shape of a piece of pizza comes in here. I think we all we can all draw a piece of pizza. Or you can think of it the other way and think of it like a big creature right here taking a big bite out of something. It's like squished Pac-Man. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna do the, the pizza shape because pizza is good. <laughs> and good for me. I can I can remember how to draw pizza. So well, let's start up here. Let's make a little dot. 
And let's let's figure out where this is going to come down to. So it actually comes down to right about right about the corner. How about that? Let's just go for that. And I'm just going to dot it in. Coming down. If you need to turn your canvas this way so that you can actually draw a piece of pizza, do that. It's going to look really triangular at first. But we will fix that up with black. We'll make it actually look like land. I feel like my original comes quite a bit further out. It does. You can see there's a big gap here. This one's only about an inch and a half. So I'm going to touch it up. And we'll be painting black in a brownish color right back over this. So don't even worry about it right now. I know it looks crazy and you're thinking, what have I done? <laughs> no, we're gonna, we're gonna fix that up. Okay, let's go ahead and paint in the river. And then I'll get us on the, this side. I'm doing some stuff in a minute here. Let's take our biggest brush, my bonfire side people. I want to use the skinny edge of the brush because water sits flat. So we really want to indicate that, make a little bit more paint here. We want to indicate that with our brush strokes. So let's drop down about a quarter inch because we have, we actually have a little row of shrubs that we put in there. So I'm just going to go straight across using the thin edge of my brush, about a quarter inch and just keep it as straight as you can. And then I'm literally going to brush back and forth. Don't worry if you overlap into the black pizza part because we're, like I said, we're going to touch that up. But I do like to occasionally leave bits of the black paint through there because that really makes it look like there's some uh, little ripples and waves and some depth to this body of water. Sorry for my tent people. You guys are probably getting a little bored here, ready to do something. So you guys over here, keep doing that. Bring it all the way down here. Those of us over here, we are going to paint and I will come back and finish that up. It's kind of weird doing one double painting myself <laughs> while keeping everybody occupied. We're gonna paint in a overlap, a hill that overlaps. So you, on this one, you see it goes straight across. On this one, we actually have this cool hill. It kind of almost mimics this mountain range. So you want to use your medium brush and black paint. And where to start it? Let's see, right about here, right at the edge. So go ahead and draw it in however you like. You can exactly mimic this, although I try not to exactly mimic it. I want it to look like it's kind of its own little thing. We put our fir trees on this later. There, and now you'll just fill that in down to the black. So I'll do mine really fast and then I'm gonna go back to the lake or river, whatever it is. I can't even remember if I looked at a photo for this. I think that we were in a, a period of time where we were painting a lot of outdoor recreation sort of paintings. And this tent that's on the original, it ended up in like three or four paintings. And so, yeah, it was just, I guess, wanderlust phase. How are we doing, Paul? Am, am I good? Just, you really just did that to make me edit that out, didn't you? You don't have to edit it out. I can talk to you. It's okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so the reason I was asking is every once in a while, our software kind of does this funky thing, and, and I'll get a video. Yeah record a whole video and realize, get home. Oh, guess what? It didn't record. <laughs> That's really frustrating. So sometimes I'll just check in. 
Those of you on this side, down in here, you may already have gotten to the bottom because you're fast and I'm still trying to work over here. I want to add, even if you've already gotten to the bottom, I want to add a little bit of darker paint down there. So even just plain dark blue would be fine or maybe the blue mixed with black if you really want it to be pretty dark. Let's have a look here. I ended up with it pretty dark down here. You can almost not even see where the land ends. So maybe I'll just make it not quite that dark this time. And I was looking at mine and I thought I maybe had a little too many dark spots with the black paint showing through. So a few of them I'm just going to smooth over using the wide side of the brush. Not too many though, because I, I want some of them there. Wow, that looks crazy. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna fix it up. It just looks really weird right now because of that big triangular shape that we drew in. Okay. A little bit later, after we get some land put on, I'll have us make some little ripples in the light blue that go around the edges of the land that will make it look pretty cool and i'm going to have us on the the um riverside we're going to touch this up and then all of us together are going to paint this brownish color over some of the land so for those of you on the riverside you know i'll get i'll get actually i'll get the Tent side doing something real quick too, because you guys have had to wait a bit. Let's do some highlights on the mountain over here. So our, our uh, sunset is some, sun is, has set below somewhere over here. So it's actually gonna cast some light on the left edges of these mountains. So I like to use my medium brush and put a little pink on it. That's all, probably almost too much. I'll brush a little off here. And I'm, I loaded up kind of the edge of the brush. And if you're using a flat brush, you can load up the edge of the brush too. And I'm literally just going to scrape some of this color down. It'll be choppy. You want it to be choppy because these are rocks, sometimes snow. And there's really not, not any blending between rocks and snow. It's, it's pretty harsh in a uh, landscape. So you want to, don't, don't paint it blended. That looks so cool and it's such a subtle, easy thing. And it just suddenly turns these mountain shapes into looking a lot more three-dimensional. So you guys work on that. Those of us over here, we're gonna use the medium brush as well and we're gonna use black paint. And we're going to make this look like it matches with this. So, oops, drop of water. Dip the brush in the black paint. Let's have a look at our original, what we're aiming for. So I'm gonna smooth out the edge and come along here. So I've got all these funky dots. I want to cover those up. It's all even over here. I'm going to start. And going over those dots. And this right here, it can come out to come at, It can come to a pretty slim point here. And then here, same thing sort of wavy. Uh, wavy brush strokes just to cover up all those dots and then we'll, we'll paint all this in. So when you, when you get all that painted in, you can cover up these funky blue dots. There is something I really don't like that I, and maybe you can see it too. I don't like how sharp this ends right here. So I'm going to do what I probably did on the original, but didn't really point it out. I, think I thought of this as water, but I bet this is just the land coming around here. I think that will look better. 
little on the fly change. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll have you do too, just uh, let's just come down here like this. Like we've got a whole nother landform. You can even round that off just a bit. And we'll paint that in solid black. You might have to wait till this blue dries and do it later. It's such an easy thing to do though. And it looks so much better. So it looks like we, we continue on, like there's another hill coming in here. And this, I mean, you could bring this out further if you want. You could make this bump up a bit if you want. But yeah, I like that better. A bit more natural flow. So those of us you've, on the, the left side, you've still got your black on your brush. What I wanna do is create this sort of rough, uh, shrubby looking area. It's really easy. Right now we just have a, a black straightish line. And I literally just come through and I dab little shrubby shapes that are random. You want to make sure they're not, you're not doing an exact pattern. So that I'm not ending up with just a straight line across. It looks like, oh, maybe there's some overgrowth over there, or trees or whatever. There's something more interesting than just a, a straight line. Down in here, I'll just let it sort of taper out. Nice. I've got this one bright spot right here that almost looks like it could be the sun. It's real tiny. Okay. Washing the middle brush off. I'm gonna set it aside. And thinking. <laughs> what I'm gonna have us all do next is we're gonna add this brownish shade to our land. So you can see it there. I love the way this ended up looking because to me it looks like there's maybe some fog in the background. What I was really trying to do is make it look like this bonfire was sort of lighting up the dirt and everything around it. And then later on we'll, we'll add this after we add the tent and everything. But let's, let's get this brownish color on both lands. So this one and this one. So we're all gonna do something at the same time. Yay, let's wash our big brush if it's not been washed. Dry it off. And to get that brown shade, I just mix the bright orange and black. So whether you bring orange over to your black or black over to your orange, it doesn't matter. How much? Well, it the black really overpowers the orange color right away. So it's, it, see how quickly that makes sort of a brown color? Not a super attractive brown either. And I, have a lot on my brush for mixing. I don't want to start with a lot of paint, so I'll just swipe it off either on my towel or my palette. And let's start, those of us over here, I'm dry brushing it in. What that is, is I don't have much paint on my brush at all, and I'm just spreading out what very little paint there is. <laughs> we have a 12 week old puppy here, which is the reason Paul's not doing the video with me. He's puppy sitting. And I can see, I think Paul went in the back room and she's sitting there staring at me. <laughs> Why aren't you picking me up? Why are you over there? What are you doing? Okay, so I, I primarily just had you guys on the, oh, what happened there? That's a little chunky paint. You guys on the uh, tent side doing this. Let's, let's get the bonfire side people going to let's bring this color in bring it all the way out to this triangular tip of land here we've got some wet black paint up in here along the edge don't worry about it just work with it because we have black in this mix anyway so it's not going to cause any issue just try to match it up with your partner Ask for permission if you paint on their side. I don't want to be account accountable for any fights that start. So I, this area, what I'm doing right now, I'm kind of flattening this area out, making sure my brush strokes are pretty flat because the bonfire is on a flat area. Building a fire on a hill would be a really bad idea. And you can, you can put a little down in here. 
It would probably, um, the fire would probably cast some light over here too, especially along this edge. Maybe we'll, we'll extra special highlight that later. I think that would be a good idea. There. Looks like I need to touch up a spot here or two. Didn't quite come all the way to the edge. And I just sort of let my brush run out of paint as I get up in here. So I don't want to end up with an obvious line. I just sort of blend that out with very little paint on the brush. Even a damp brush. Well, you want it pr pretty, uh, mostly dry. If it's too damp, it can cause some issue for what we're doing here. Okay, dirt, yay. Wash the brush and we're gonna move along. Okay, brush wise, we're all going to be using the medium brush. And those of us on the water side, I'm gonna have us put those ripples in I talked about. And actually let's, let's use the smallest brush because I think the smallest brush will be ideal for what we do. Those of you over here, I'm gonna teach you how to paint fir trees. So I'll teach that really quick. Um, both of you, you can pay attention to this because fir trees are something that appear in a lot of paintings and they're a super important element to learn if you do landscapes. These right here, so they obviously they're planted here. I like that one kind of comes up over the sky, like that. One's a little shorter, but it could also come over the sky depending like right here. I notice I've got a larger area here than here. So both of mine might actually end up crossing over into the sky. Now, if you feel more comfortable using the smallest brush, you can, absolutely. I'm gonna teach you with the medium brush. Let me grab some paper over here. Let's see, I just flipped my mountain one I was working on earlier over. Yeah, wet paint. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna dip it in water, dry it off. I just like to start off with a brush that's kind of freshly damp. And what I do is um, I will draw the tree trunk first. Some artists do it different. Some don't draw it. Paul doesn't draw a tree trunk. He just likes to draw just branches. And then at the top, I make a few dots that go, like maybe six, seven dots that go straight up. So at first it's going to look like a stalk of wheat or something. And then I give it a little dabby dots that go out into a little mustache. And then I do same thing, dabby dots where I'm just dabbing up and down. I'm not poking with my brush straight up and down. You can see I have it kind of angled to the side. That one got a little, little wide too soon. And I just keep going. Make it nice and full. You don't want to see your tree trunk so much because these tree boughs go all the way around it. Ignore that one. That's not a good branch. Although, if you look around in nature, it's really hard to find a perfect tree. Really hard. We found one once in the gorge along the Columbia River where it's really windy. And then one year, it was gone because the wind blew it over. <laughs> it was too perfect. Mother Nature was like, nope, you're out of here. So there we go, pretty easy to do. Uh, one thing to, to avoid, and if you have some paper, you can practice these first. One thing to avoid, I see this a lot in the studio and I call this the fishbone tree because people will leave uh, really big gaps between the boughs. This looks really cool for a graphical design, like on a, a hat where you've got this silhouette thing going on. I see a lot of logos that have that sort of thing and it looks really cool. For a more natural painting though, you want to keep it nice and full like this. This is very fixable. A lot of times people will have that and they'll be like, I ruined it. And I come, come through and I'm like, let me see your brush. And I'll show them how you just fill in between each of these. Always do that dabbing up and down with your brush shorter to the side. Kind of like a, I guess kind of like a 45 degree angle for me. And then we'll see what that does is it gives you that sort of, <laughs> I don't know what the dog is doing in there, but it's dragging something around. It'll give you this really furry texture. So nobody's trees look alike. I 
make trees one way and other artists make them completely different and I'll try to replicate theirs and I just have my way of doing them and apparently that's what my brain and body wants to do so you guys will have your way of doing them too and they won't look like mine. I'm going to dip the brush in water and I am going to mix a drop of water with some black because I noticed my brush was running out of paint a little too fast and it just means that the uh, paint's kind of thickened up as it dries. So I just, yeah, I thin some out with a little bit of water, not super thin. And I'm gonna plant one right here, I just go for it. You can go from the sky down or you can go from the ground up. If you wanna use your little brush to paint the tree trunk in first, I'm gonna do that. I found that, uh, I don't have quite enough paint. I found that the uh, medium brush is a little too big. There, <laughs> a stick, woohoo. I'll draw the one next to it too. And it's just gonna be a short one. Now you can use this brush to paint the trees in. This, our canvases are not really big here. So either whatever feels more like you're going to have more success with your medium or small brush. Do the little dots at the top on both, little mustachio on both. Maybe I'll use the little brush for this littler tree. And just keep going down. Don't make it too wide right away. We want it to be wide, widest at the bottom. And if you overcommit in the beginning to make a really wide tree, you end up with a giant wide tree, which those exist in nature too. But in a painting, I generally try to Keep them on the narrow side, just knowing that I can come back and widen them up if I need to. So now I'm using my little brush for this little tiny one. This is good, good time-wise because it's allowing our ground to dry nicely so that the next step we do will have the ground dry and that's what we want. So you guys over here, keep working on your trees. You can add a whole forest if you want. I just had, had two, but you can put as many on there as you like if you are feeling happy with them. Okay, those of us over here, let's use our littlest brush and turquoise. I do want to mix just a drop of water with this. So just a little to thin it out, like the consistency of like cream, like half and half. And here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, let me have a look here. Some little ripples along the edge. Especially right around here where it comes around. You know, I have too much paint on my brush. Look how bright that is. Woo! So what I can do then is I wiped all my paint off my brush and I'm just using this wet paint as my paint. So see how I kind of spread it out? The other thing is you can use a rag or your finger and just kind of smooth it out. And then I'll, I'll come along here with a few little ripples hitting against the shore. And you can extend some of those out into the water a bit too, just to show that there's some water current. The light edge against the land is something I actually learned from, bless you, from Bob Ross. Uh, as a kid, I watched him a lot because we didn't have a lot of, we didn't have cable or anything until I was quite a bit older. And so he was on our OPB channel 10 local here. And that's what I watched. But yeah, I noticed he would do that. He would put a light line like back here. I could do that. Although this is pretty good contrast, so I don't need to, but like along where the water re hits the shore, it's a good spot. And you could, you could bring some of this out randomly here if you want, just not a lot of paint. And know that you can paint over it. You can paint that darker blue you made right over it. All right, we are all gonna move along and we're all gonna be using the same color next, which is nice. Oops, gonna drop the water here. Those of you painting the tent, we are gonna use probably, doo -doo -doo -doo, let's think, I'll use the smallest brush, you know, for both. Let's use the smallest brush for both. Unless you feel like the medium brush would be better for you. We're gonna mix white and yellow. Look at my palette, it's 
so full. We make a really pale, pale yellow. So it's like the color of like lemon yogurt. Hmm, that sounds good. You definitely want it yellow in tone, but just lighter than that. Maybe three, four shades lighter. The reason I'm making it so light is because when we go to paint this tent on, it looks nice and bright. That's what I like about it. So if you feel like this is too bright, you don't have to make, you could just use plain yellow. But the yellow over the black, it does, it, it's a little see-through. So it tends to not be quite as opaque and bright as this is. And same for the fire. So this is a, an under layer that we're putting on. And then we're going to add uh, on top of that orange and, and plain bright yellow. Okay, let's, let's build the fire first. So I have a, a pretty tall fire. It's right here on this little peninsula. It's shaped a lot like a stretched out teardrop shape. And what I'm going to do is put the base of it on first. So right about here, it can be out, you know, kind of closer to the water. It looks really white <laughs> because at least on the screen I'm looking at, but we add yellow and orange to it. So don't worry about that. So let's, let's just do like a little slightly curved line. And then we're going to come up on either side and I'm just flicking upward. So at first it looks like that. Now that's a good size for a little campfire. I apparently was going for the bonfire look with my original. So I brought it up pretty tall. Maybe right up to about here. So I'll bring that, that middle line up. And then all of these other lines are kind of wavy. Because if you watch a fire, that's what they just they move like crazy. Wind comes and blows all that smoke right in your face. That's what always happens. So I'm leaving bits of the dark background here and there. And I do want the very top of this to be pretty much one point, but uh, lots of little things that build up to and reach that. Now you can make little tendrils of fire that just go straight up here and there. It took me a while to learn how to paint fire and then even longer to learn how to teach it, but I feel like this method is pretty good. That's all I'm gonna do with that. So you guys keep working on that. Now for tent. I have a nice big tent here so that two people could fit in it, maybe. <laughs> and the way that I draw it, so it's about, uh, I would say this is probably about two inches from the, the edge. And if you don't want it too close to the fire because that's never a good thing. Um, it can be right straight across or you can drop it down a bit. I think I'm gonna drop it down. I'm gonna. I'm going to go, let's see here, from the bonfire, I'll, I'll kind of go over, maybe come over about two inches and then drop down an inch or so, put a dot. And what we're going to do here is we're going to draw what looks like you're drawing a droopy A or a droopy triangle. How about that? So go up and then match it up with as best as you can the other side. That's me. I maybe made mine a little too narrow, so I'm going to widen it up here. This all gets painted over, so no biggie. Okay. Now the top of it, it slightly angles down, just slightly. So I'm going to just sketch that back. This, this line is probably about two to two and a half inches. And then this, you want to parallel with this. So it's kind of doing that droopy thing like that about the same length too. And you can meet these together. We do have some land that comes in and cuts right through the side of this. So this part I'm painting right now, you won't even see. Now let's connect these. And there we go. <laughs> your basic tent. Let's paint the whole tent in using your medium brush. Let's paint the whole tent in with that color. So if you didn't mix quite enough, just mix a little more. I want to get this inside part first. 
Later on, I have us paint some pure yellow over the top of this because it gives it a more of a warmer look. And then for the sides, you can give it a little bit, maybe thinner coat here and there. I like to have it look like there's ripples and folds and, you know, fabric, fabric things. So by leaving some of these dark like that, when you paint the orange over those, it'll be darker in some spots and later in others, which works out pretty cool. Okay. Our weird looking tent. <laughs> looks like a wedge of cheese. Everything in this painting looks like food. I must be hungry. Okay, so let's go back to the bonfire. Those of you working on your, uh, you know, those of you working on this, what I'm going to have you do while we're working on bonfire is take your same brush you were using, same color, and underneath here we want to scribble back and forth. You can even mix a little water with your paint color, same color you were using. This is a highlight from the open tent flaps. And just, I'm kind of doing, see how I'm kind of scribbling into a tornado shape? Cause I think, okay, it's gonna probably reflect in kind of an upside down triangular-ish shape. Keep in mind the land we put in is gonna cut through a lot of that. So right now it looks really weird. It looks really weird cause it's supposed to look really weird. <laughs> And those of you over here, we can thinking, yeah, let's, let's do the same thing. Let's get some of this light color around you. Not a lot. I have like nothing for paint on my brush. So I, I don't want a lot because I want to put warmer yellows in here, but I do want to get some of this in. Go right up to the fire. It actually ends up kind of being, it ends up casting kind of an oval circle of light around it. Okay, and that looks like it looks like the fire is casting some light over there. Let's go ahead and take and wash this brush. Let's pick up our smallest brush again. And let's grab just pure yellow, no mixing of any kind. Let's add some of that in here. In and among the light yellow color we put on there. So this is gonna warm it up nicely. And we've got our, the reason I had us paint that lighter yellow there is because this wouldn't show up quite as good without that lighter base. So this will make it nice and bright. You can even do a few little sparks, little tiny dots. This is the very tip of the bristles of this little brush. Little popping sparks. Scary. <laughs> they always just seem to want to go right for your eye. <laughs> there, little, little, just little tiny dots there. And let's, you don't even have to wash your brush. Dip it right in the orange paint. Not a whole ton of paint here, just a little. Because when these two mix, it kind of makes a sunny delight color. <laughs> but some orange in that fire is awesome. I don't put as much orange as, as I do with yellow. Let's see how that's coming along. It's getting, it's almost ready to have some orange put on there. Okay, so let's paint some firewood. That is the brown color. It's uh, black and orange together, but a little bit darker mix than, probably a little bit darker than that. Maybe, it might, it might show up if you make the same color, because we have that light circle around here. Little brush. This can be pretty dark. Like a dark chestnut brown kind of almost black actually the orange i'm mixing in isn't really seeming to do, oh sorry i'm not even on screen the orange i'm mixing in isn't seeming to do a ton so that's good it's it's nice and dark set that down and um 
If you've ever built a, a bonfire before, you kind of build this little pyramid of wood. But I just, honestly, I just make some little pieces of wood sticking out around the fire. Make some that are a little longer than others so it doesn't look like, oh, I built this. They're all perfect and exactly the same length. Maybe some have like a branch coming off. And go right up to overlap the bottom edge of the fire too. Okay. You guys work on that. Tent people, let's use our medium brush and just plain orange paint. I've got all my brushes in my water, so they're rattling like crazy. How are we doing time wise? Oh, we're doing great. Okay. We don't have a ton more to do. Let's just fill this side in with orange. If this is still really wet, you can uh, pause the video or hair dry it or just plan on doing it later, work on something different. Now, I should have mentioned, if you don't want an orange tent, you could do a turquoise tent or a green tent. Like, we've got blue and yellow on your palette. I didn't think of that till now. You can make whatever kind of tent you want. Stripes, polka dots, big top. When I was growing up, my parents, I think at a garage sale in the 80s, bought this huge tent. We, we nicknamed it Big Top because it was huge. And we were a family of five. You could sleep family of five and friends in it. And it was canvas and probably a military tent. <laughs> and it would... We used to camped in that thing in the rain so many times. And it, like I can, I'll never forget the smell. It has a like, musty canvas smell always. And my sister, we had a sleepover with some friends. I think it was my sister's birthday. I'm washing my brush, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to a little brush. But I remember it was in June and we woke up in the early in the morning and uh, yes, the rain was leaking through. That was fun. We all piled into the house, with lucky charms. It's funny how you remember those weird things. Okay, my trip down memory lane is over. So let's, let's do a little uh, tent flap over here in the orange. Just trace along the yellow with the little brush. So it's like the tent flap is maybe pulled back so it could have a little bulk to it. And you can use your little brush if needed to touch up any edges that were hard to get with that medium sized brush. So I did all that where I left the dark, dark spots and you don't really see them. <laughs> Not too much. Did you know that the park doesn't have dog poo bag dispensers? <laughs> I'll be back. Oh boy. Yeah, I kind of knew that. I forgot to tell you we were out of dog poop bags. Gosh, it seems like puppies just, that's all they do. They poop like crazy. <laughs> okay, so this needs to dry, but this part is probably dry enough to take some pure um, yellow with your medium brush. Make sure it's clean that you don't have any like weird blue stuff happening in there and just dip it right in the yellow. And I sort of dot, uh, dot. I was going to say dab and dot came out, came out as daub, like daub it on. I just sort of dab it on, dab and pull so that you, you get, uh, these spots that are brighter than others. Cause if you, Think about it, like a lantern is going to cast light patterns and sometimes they'll have shadows and... And sometimes you'll have bright areas. It's kind of ending up all one color. Let's get some of this lighter yellow down here on the ground though. Not a lot. Just paint it in there with your... that first color we put on there. And those of us over here, we're going to want to do the same thing. You can use this medium brush or your little brush and we want to get bright yellow around here. Just go between your firewood. We want the firewood to stay there and not be painted over. We are going to put some highlights on it though. Let's have a look, the original. See how much I have? Quite a bit around there and some orange, which we'll do in a second. 
Just a little pain at a time though, because a little bit can go a long way, but very fixable if you get too much. Uh, make your, your black and orange mix and just touch it up. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna mix orange and yellow together. I'm gonna purposely make Sunny D color. Just a little. Probably a little more yellow than orange because orange really tends to overpower it a lot. Look at that, Sunny D, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Paul and I were watching a, I think I was watching Mojo on YouTube. And it was a whole segment on commercials from 1993. It was random, but it was really funny. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I was like a senior in high school. Totally remember that Taco Bell commercial. I'm gonna switch to my little brush because I really like the way these, some of them are brighter like that. And this one's sort of a little too hazy. So little brush. And I'll go first, yellow first, and just streak in. Obviously, I don't want it to look like there's fire on the ground. But I did want to put in some brighter spots so it wasn't just all one hazy color. And then I'll go with my Sunny D color. And now I want to highlight the some pieces of the firewood. So I'm going to use that, that Sunny D color. That was the yellow and orange mixed together. And I'll just, the top edges are what the fire would highlight. So I'll just hit the top edges of each of these little pieces of wood. Now the wood is really subtle. You don't really see it. We're not over detailing it. If we wanted to do a lot longer class, we could totally over detail it, but there's no need to. The other thing you can do if your firewood is not showing up and it just sort of disappears, I can tell I did this on the original. I took a little black or I mixed more black with the orange black mix with my little brush. And I came through and I, I did low lights. So that would be under the underside of the wood. So just low light. So opposite of a highlight and that can help make that stand out just a little bit better. Looks like all my pieces of wood ended up being the same length. Whatever, just go with it. And I have this bright white in the center of the fire because that just is like the way fires are, have that heat. And that. whenever I paint a fire, I always do bright white right down the center. And I use the little brush and just scrape it on there, haphazard like. And those of us on the tent side, so we've got our bonfire done. Unless you want to just add anything else to it. Oh, you know what? We actually need to reflect a little in the water. See that? Mine lined up great here with the water. Here, it's not really, I don't have a lot of space, but I do want to highlight some. And I think I'm primarily going to use the Sunny Delight color. Actually, let's do, let's do a little yellow first. Pure yellow, no mixing. Sorry, tent people. I know you guys are just waiting. Actually, let me have you guys do something because we need to do this. Sorry, bonfire people. I'm skipping around a bit, but we're almost done. Let's take black paint with our medium brush for tent people. And let me pull the picture over here to reference and show you what we're going to do. So I've got this dark, rocky hill that cuts, comes in here higher than the, the bottom edge of the tent, cuts across and just goes down. So I'll, I'll come in, let's see, if you just sort of eyeball straight across and come up maybe an inch and a half or so. This is done just like the way our mountains are, just sloping, wobbly brush strokes. If it didn't end up being tall enough, you can make it taller. And cut across. And just let it go off the bottom of the canvas. Then I want you to brush this in so it's gonna be like dark black at the, the front edge here. And just let your brush kind of run out of paint. Might be easier to use the biggest brush. Cause you can see I did that on here. I just let it run out of paint. No pattern, like this one has a definite stripe. 
This one I, I sort of brushed down in some parts and let the brush run out of paint. So it's a little more random. So I'm using my big brush now. So then you get that dirt color still, but the front edge of this hill doesn't get lost. There. And we'll put some highlights on that from the tent light. So you guys work on that. And we'll go back to bonfire. I've got a little yellow on my brush, my littlest brush. Not a lot of paint. And I'm just going to drop down into the water. Now, uh, reflections tend to sort of stretch. Because we're painting the yellow over the blue, it's turning slightly greenish. So we might mix a little white with that yellow. Like we first did when we first drew the bonfire. That's going to give you a better, less green color. And you don't need a ton of paint here. Now you can even bring, we'll get some orange in there too. You can even bring some of this, I'm gonna wipe off a lot of paint. You can bring some of this over here highlighted on the, the land. Like the fire is casting a glow across here. And if you get too much, just make your black and orange mix again and paint right over it. That's a little too white. I'm gonna go, I needed to use just pure yellow there, I think. So I'm gonna add just some pure yellow. Probably went a little overkill, so I'll show you how I would repair that. Black and orange, middle brush. And I'll just soften it up from the bottom, working up. Let's get a little more black there. There, it's a little more subtle now. And let's get a little orange in that water reflection there. Hopefully you ended up with a little area where you could reflect it on the water. If not, it's not a big deal. I just noticed that's how it was on the original. I thought that was kind of neat. Okay. All right, bonfire people. We are done until we do the little smoke little heart smoke signal. <laughs> That's all you have left to do. I'm gonna move this aside and we don't have much to do over here. Middle brush, no actually, this is just needs to dry a couple minutes longer. Let's use our smallest brush. And I'm going to mix black and orange, but mostly black, you want it pretty dark, but it can be slightly on the, the brownish side of black. And I'm going to create the tent pole and the little um, tent stakes. So go right through the middle. You might add a drop of water to your paint. As it's sat here on the palette and gotten dry, it's not super fluid and you want pretty fluid paint for doing this. Now, and you're never gonna get, unless you use a ruler, you're never gonna get a perfectly straight tent pole. I'll just say it's, you know, it's a stick they found in the forest. They forgot their tent poles, so they had to use sticks. And now for the uh, stakes, simple, just little X's right at the base here. Maybe you can fit one back here. And now let's get a highlight on the ground. See that? I used a little orange and a little yellow. Medium brush. Let's start with the yellow, just a little on the brush. And your black is still probably a little bit wet and actually might be advantageous right now for what we're, because we want kind of a subtle highlight. If it's too wet, mine is almost too wet. Uh, if it's too wet, you can just hair dry it or, or wait a few. Black dries really fast out of all the colors. Yeah, that black is just literally sucking up the yellow highlight. So we'll come back to that. It's got a little glow here. 
but we'll uh, we'll work on our uh, star constellation on this side, and then bonfire. We get the, the little heart. So we have a heart on both sides. Both of these are totally optional. If you don't like the look of those and that's kind of not your vibe, leave them off. You can just have it be like this, and it's kind of a cool landscape. You can you know you can add other things. Like I could extend some of this highlight into. Based on how mine is set up, I feel like some of this highlight could come over to here. Just ask your partner's permission, please. There. But it felt like it just was sort of cut off and they needed to get the two paintings to come together. This, I could almost, um, it's pretty, like that's a pretty intense highlight. I could almost bring some of this uh, dirt color in here to break it up and soften it a little. There, I like that a little better. And let's get let's get going on this constellation. I'm going to show you on paper. I was glad I got a chance to paint this before I taught it today because I thought about how am I going to teach that heart constellation? So it's really all it is is it's an M, an M with a V. So when you dot your stars on, I'm going to dot mine on in blue so that you can see that. Actually, I'll do pink. Pink is right here, and I haven't used much of it. So I do like a M. Like if I were to a dot to dot M. So if I were to connect all these dots, it would make a capital M. Actually, I did that wrong. Forget that. Scratch that. Uh, let's do the two at the top. We do want to do an M, but I didn't want these lined up. I want the, the second ones to be out a bit more. I'm doing it at an angle, which is why it, if, I were to, if I were to hold it like so straight up and down, then you'd see that I really am doing an M sort of shape. So if I were to connect those, it does make like a, a wide M like that. And then we just do under this dot another. And then when I connect those with just a white, I'm using pink obviously, but on the canvas, I'll just do these lines. Then you end up with a heart shape at an angle. Let's have a look at their original again. I did that, the wide M and the a little dot below that makes the V shape down here. Let's go for it, if you're gonna do it. I feel like this is probably a little harder than the, the smoke, smoky heart, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> we'll see, I haven't painted that smoky heart in a year. Okay, handle of the brush, white paint. And let's, let's go ahead and stamp the top two and then the one that's about, you know, a quarter inch down. So that makes part of the M. And this is going to come out. And this is going to come out. <laughs> it's going to run into my tree, I think. No, not quite. It's a wide heart. Then I'm going to take my tip of, very tip of the bristles, little little bit of white paint there. And I'll draw the lines to meet each one. Almost looks like it could be a few changes. It could be the bat symbol. There. <laughs> it's kind of a heart. It could look like lips. <laughs> you guys are done with this side, unless you want to add your own touches or, you know, go back. Obviously we need to go back and if you were like me and your land was still wet, uh, add that final highlight. I'll do that in a second. Let's get you guys working. Got so many canvases over here. You gotta keep them, keep them uh, under control. Okay, so this is really hazy to look like smoke. Now, one thing I did is I, I did bring some smoke down in here too from these little tendrils of flame that are down here. We want to use our littlest brush and the smallest amount of paint possible, white. And so I dip it in the paint 
I picked up a dot, a little much bigger glob than I need. So I'm going to wipe all of it, what feels like all of it off on the towel. So you can see that the tip of the bristles are tinted white, but there's no actual white paint there. Let's let's get, in, get some smoke down in here first. So literally just kind of adding some little curly tendrils. And this is also helping your brush run out of paint, which we want for when we come up in here. Although I think I, think I have too little. Yes, I have too little. So I'm going to repeat that process, wipe it all off. And you can uh, come up here, dot it out if that's helpful. I'm going to thicken all this up. So first it's going to be just kind of thin line of smoke just to get the shape on. And then I did this fun little thing where it sort of curves down like that. Now I just didn't want to thicken it up just by adding more smoke. Wipe your brush off on your towel every time. And you can literally just kind of curl your brush in little circles. Almost done. I feel like I need to bring that down just a bit. You just have a look and if it looks uneven in any areas, you can add more. You can also take your finger and sort of smudge it out. Although mine's pretty dry, so it's not really doing anything. That is done. So we're all almost completely done. Now, highlights. This is nice and dry. There's just a couple spots I can see they're a little shiny, so they're still just a tiny bit wet, but it's gonna work just fine. Um, let's mix let's mix the orange and yellow together, like the sunny D color. When you mix paint, you end up with a lot on your brush, so brush it off on your towel. And now just come through. Okay, I wiped too much off. Just come through and Kind of like how we did the mountain highlights, how I said we're just going to scrape it on. That's what we're doing. And now I feel like I need some just plain yellow in there too, although my brush needed to be washed. It got kind of muddy. Here. I use my fingertip a lot. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm smudging paint out. And unless you want to add any other element to this, you are completely done outside of signing your painting. And it's funny that these end up lining up perfectly. <laughs> like they're the exact same help. So uh, yeah, you want to sign your painting. Um, if there's two of you doing it, maybe each sign one corner. If one of you did it, you can just sign one corner if you like. Whatever color you like. I love this turquoise blue. So I'm going to do that. I use my little espresso. I usually water down the paint just a little bit so I can actually write with it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> wow, that's ended up right. And other things you could add, just thinking here, you could add more trees or rocks even in here. Like you could develop this area more. You don't have to, it can be completely done. And uh, yeah, that was it. That was fun. I really like the way this one turned out. It was fun teaching it because like I said, I hadn't taught it before. It just designed it for the artists to teach themselves. Hopefully they had a good time. <laughs> Hopefully you guys had a good time. I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out now to me. So happy date night to you guys. Thanks for joining with us. You can buy the kit that comes with all the colors on gobox.com. That's G-O-G-H-B-O-X.com. 
Um, we do have, if you're doing it on your own, with your own supplies, you can absolutely do that. Uh, paint on wood, paper, whatever you want. And um, we do have a Patreon and buy me a coffee, which donations are awesome, especially right now that while our studio is closed, we're kind of just a, kind of just running on fumes. <laughs> so anything helps out. I really appreciate you guys uh, joining in. And if you if you like what you saw, you can click to subscribe and click the bell for notifications every time we post new content. And our next video is coming up. No, early February, I think. So we do have also a, if you want to participate in a live one-on-one -on -one class, well, you're with other students, we're doing some Zoom events and you can find those on vinego.com, which is V-I-N-E-G-O-G-H.com. And we have several, we have a date night one coming up that has a couple elk with a sunrise. Very similar vibe to this one. We could probably go together. <laughs> we like an extension of the scene, so. At any rate, thank you so much for joining with me and doing the, uh, the date night painting. This was a lot of fun and we will see you next time.